Hello and welcome to a new video on the Crypto2 YouTube channel. This video is part of the classical cipher series of our channel. In this video, I want to show you how you can encrypt and decrypt using the Hill cipher. I structured this video into three different parts. In the first part, we will have a look at the short history of the Hill cipher. Then I will show you how the Hill cipher actually works. And finally, we will have a look at how we can encrypt and decrypt using the Hill cipher in Crypto2. The Hill cipher was invented by a math professor whose name was Lester S. Hill, who worked at the Hunter College in New York City. Hill invented the after him named cipher in 1929. And the Hill cipher was the first one which was based on linear algebra. And the professor even built a machine, the so-called message protector, which implemented his cipher. The main problem with the machine that Hill invented was that the key is fixed in the mechanics of the machine and of course then the key is not changeable. And based on that the machine did not sell very well. On the right side here you can see Lester as Hill. I took the picture from Wikipedia and here you can see a picture from Hill's message protector and this image was taken from the original patent. So how does the Hill cipher actually works? Before we have a look at the Hill cipher itself, we need some foundations so that we better understand how it works. First of all, we need to know how to convert a text to a number array. Let's assume our plain text is hello world. And we want to change this to a number array since the Hill cipher works on linear algebra. On the right side, you see a table with a mapping. For instance, A maps to 0, B maps to 1, C to 2, and so on. And the last character here is Z maps to 25. So hello world becomes 7, 4, 11, 11, 14, and so on. I use some colors that you see which letter maps to which number. The next thing we need to know is how to calculate with modulo. And for instance, we have here an A combined with B. This can, for instance, be a multiplication or an addition. And then we have this mod M here. And that means that we take the rest of that operation, A something B, uh, divided by M. And as so that you understand what I mean, I made two examples. For instance, we have 15 plus 16 mod 26. We know that 15 plus 16 is 31. But 31 mod 26, we have to take the rest of 31 divided by 26, and this equals to 5. Another example is a multiplication here. We have 7 multiplied with 5 modulo 26, and this equals 35 mod 26, and this, we also take the rest, is 9. So with modulo, we only get the numbers from 0 to 25, when we take modulo 26. Then we need to know how the matrix M and vector V multiplication modulo M works. But first of all, what is a vector? A vector is a tuple, for instance here, a to one vector of two numbers, just X and Y. Then we have matrices, and a matrix is uh, kind of similar to a vector, but can, of, uh, can have much more values like this here. We have, for instance, a two two matrix with A, B, C, D, but we can also have bigger matrices like A, B, C, D, E, F, or A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, and so on. And then we need to know what is an identity matrix and an identity matrix. We have here an example is, uh, it consists only of ones and zeros and the identity matrix is always completely zero, but has line of ones from, for instance, the upper left corner to the down right corner. So we have 1, 0, 0, 1 for a 2, 2 identity matrix. A 3, 3 identity matrix would look like 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. So how does the matrix M and vector multiplication works? First of all, you write between the matrix and the vector a multiplication symbol. And then you write the matrix here and the vector here. And then we have these equations here, how to calculate the multiplication between the matrix M and the vector V. So you multiply A and X, then you add B plus Y, and then you multiply C with X, and then D with Y. And these you add, and in the end, you also get a two, one vector. 
And I have here an example also calculated with uh, modulo 26. We use modulo 26 since this is the length of the Latin alphabet. And we have a matrix here 5, 11, 15, 9 multiplied with the vector 3, 5. And we get for AX here, we get A as 5 and X3, this is 15. Then we have BY, so our B is 11 and our Y is 5. So have, we have 11 multiplied with 5 is 55. Then we have CX, C is 15 and X is 3. So we have 3 multiplied 15 is 45. And again, we have DY, D here is 9 and Y is 5. So we have also 9 multiplied with 5 and this is 45 and we add this. So we get a vector of 70 and 90. And then of course we have to calculate the modulus of this and modulus of 70 with 26 is 18 and of 90 it's 12. So our end result, the end vector here is 18, 12. The next thing we need to know is what is the inverse of a matrix. When you multiply the original matrix M with its inverse matrix M to the power of minus one, you get the identity matrix here. And um, I have here an example, multiplication of a matrix and its inverse. And in this video, I won't cover how you actually multiply matrices. This is not needed for the Hill cipher, but that you see that this is the inverse. We need to know what the identity matrix is here. And that's the result of a matrix and its inverse matrix is the identity matrix. So we have five, three, seven, four as an example here. And it's inverse matrix 22, 3, 7, 21. And when we multiply it, we get 131, 78, 182, 105. And when we calculate the modulus of these values, we get indeed 1, 0, 0, 1. And this is the identity matrix. So how does the Hill cipher now actually works? First of all, for the Hill cipher, we have the key generation. And uh, from now on, we always work with mod 26 and 2.2 matrices, but clearly for the Hill cipher, uh, you can use even uh, bigger matrices. For instance, Hill use 6.6 matrix matrices, but since we want to have easy examples, we only use the 2.2 matrices. So first we create an encryption matrix M, that's just a uh, random matrix, and the inverse decryption matrix M to the power of minus one. So we have to find an M there where an M to the power of minus one exists. And the sender of the message needs the encryption matrix M and the receiver needs the decryption matrix M to the power of minus one. And uh, M and power M to the power of minus one are the key of the Hill cipher. And having one of these matrices, uh, the other can be computed easily. And for the next slides, we use M equal to 5, 3, 7, 4. And we already know that the inverse matrix of M uh, is 22, 3, 7, 21. So on this slide, I want to show you how the encryption of the Hilf cipher actually works. And we want to encrypt the plain text hello world. So the first step is that we have to change the plain text to numbers. I already showed you how you can do this. So hello world is uh, converted to 7, 4, 11, 11, 14, 23, and so on. Then in the second step, we need to change the uh, numbers to so-called plain text vectors here. So we change the first two numbers to seven and four, the uh, second two numbers to a vector 11, 11, and so on. So we have for hello world, these five vectors here. Then in the third step, we encrypt each plain text vector using our encryption matrix M. For example, for the 74 uh, vector here, we take the matrix 5374, which is our encryption matrix, multiply it with the vector 74. Then we get as a result a vector of 4765. But you know, we need to uh, use modulo operations, so we get 2113. And this uh, we do for every of these vectors here. So we get a set of ciphertext vectors here, these uh, five ciphertext vectors. And then in the final step, we convert the vectors to text again, and we convert the 21 to V, the 13 to N, and so on. And in the end, we get V, N, K, R, G, E, R, K, M, L as our ciphertext. Now let's have a look how we decrypt using the Hill cipher. So we received now the ciphertext here. The first step also is um, we change the ciphertext to numbers. So we get 21, 13 and so on. 
then we change the numbers to ciphertext vectors. So we take the first two numbers here, 21, 13, the second two numbers, 10, 17, and so on. Then we have the ciphertext vectors. And then we decrypt each ciphertext vector using our inverse matrix. And here's an example. We take the inverse matrix now, the decryption matrix 22, 3, 7, 21. We multiply uh, the vector with it, so 21, 13. As a result, we get 501 and 420. But of course, we need to uh, take the modulo of this. So we have 7 and 4 because we took modulo 26. And we do this again for each of our ciphertext vectors to get our plain text vectors here. And in the end, we convert the vectors to text again. So we take the 7, get an H, we get the 4, we get the E, and so on. And in the end, we get again, hello world. Here are some facts about the Hill cipher. Using a 2-2 matrix, we have a bigraphic, bipartite, monoalphabetic substitution. It's bigraphic because we encrypt two letters of the plain text at the same time. Then it's bipartite because we get two letters in the ciphertext at the same time. And it's monoalphabetic because same plain text bigrams are encrypted with same ciphertext bigrams. And of course, we can increase these and then these, of course, change to trigraphic, tripartite, foregraphic, fourpartite, and so on and so on. And increasing the metric size also increases the security of the cipher. And of course, the usage complexity. I don't think that anyone wants to perform complete encryption with a 6-6 six, six matrix on a plain text. And if you make any one mistake, then the complete block that you encrypt at the same time is uh, yeah, just wrong. And since the cipher is based on linear algebra, having enough plain text cipher packs tear pairs makes it easy to compute the key. And this is a known plain text attack, and with enough uh, plain text and cipher text, this is easily possible. And you may already have seen the videos on basics of cryptology. So uh, for modern ciphers, we would say that uh, such a cipher is broken because with the modern cipher, the cipher has to be secure with respect to all attack types that we know. But um, the Hill cipher is a classic cipher and you should never use this for any serious purpose. But even that we know a known plain text attack on the cipher, uh, up to uh, today, we do not know any good ciphertext only attack. So attacking a 6-6 six, six, uh, Hill cipher is really, really hard and nearly impossible with uh, ciphertext only. And Professor Hill used 6-6 six, six matrices with his machine, so we can assume that he intended to use the Hill cipher with 6-6 six, six matrices. So now let's have a look at the key space size of the Hill cipher. And the key space size is a number of invertible matrices. And why do we take the invertible matrices as a key space? This is because, of course, you cannot take a matrix that has no inverse. Because if you take a matrix for encryption that has no inverse, you can encrypt, but then you cannot decrypt. Thus, we have to take the number of invertible matrices. And here I uh, calculated uh, the numbers of invertible matrices for uh, different types of matrices. For instance, when you take the 2, 2 matrix here, we have a key space size of about 2 to the power of 18. And the exponents here are rounded up. And with uh, 3, 3 matrix, we have 2 to the power of 41. With 4, 4, we have 2 to the power of 74. With 5, 5, we have 2 to the power of 116. And with 6, 6, we already have key space size of 2 to the power of 168. So the Hill cipher has with huge matrices really a huge key space. Now let's see how we do it in Crypt 2. Our task is first to encrypt plain text using the Hill cipher and then we will decrypt the cipher text also using the Hill cipher. I'm here now in Crypt 2 and I want to show you how you can encrypt and decrypt using the Hill cipher. And since I'm lazy today, I don't want to create a template or a workspace on my own. I just search for a already created template in Crypto2. So I enter here Hill, and then I open the Hill Cipher template. And I make some more space. And here we have the template. So what do we see here? We have here our plain text where we can enter our plain text, and we want to enter Hello World because we will encrypt and decrypt the same as uh, I did in the example I already had shown you. Then we have here the matrix that we need, 
and here is the four four metrics but I want to use the metrics from the examples, so I have it in memory, so I just control V here, and we have 5, 3, 7, 4 as our metrics. So, and here we have two uh, Hill Cipher components. This one here is set to encryption, and this here is set to decryption. And we will see here our ciphertext, and we will see here our decrypted ciphertext. This is plain text. And here we see we have some uh, splitters and converters. This is because this here is just um, text and we have to convert it to a big integer array because the Hill cipher needs a big integer array for encryption and decryption. And these components uh, create the metrics or convert the, the text to a big integer array that's interpreted by the Hill cipher components as metrics. So let's test it. And as we can see here, we have an error. So let's have a look in the lock. Could not convert input to big integer. So why is this? Let's have a look. I think we have to say this here and this here, and we need this and this. 5374, 5374, convert to big integer, hmm. 5374, ah, okay. You have to enter the matrix in this form here, so it will change this to, now it's correct. I think there was a problem with the copy paste. So as we can see here, we have 5374 and it converts it to a big integer array, array of 5374 and the Hill ciphers both get uh, 5734 as input. And we see here our cipher text. We have VN, KR, GE, RK, ML. That's the same cipher text that we have seen as, uh, at the example slides. And as a decryption here, we get hello world. And with every component, you can keep on typing. And now I want to show you something that I didn't show you before, because what happens if you want to encrypt using a 2-2 matrix, but you have not an even number. You have an odd number of characters here. For instance, we make an A here. And in that case, you cannot encrypt only a single uh, letter here, because we have a vector with two dimensions. So what does the Hill cipher automatically, automatically do for you? It adds an X at the end of the plain text. So every time you have an uh, odd number of letters, it adds an X. And then if you type an additional letter, of course the X is away. And as you see here, this is yellow, so the Hill cipher component warns you if your text is uh, too short and it, when it added an additional number. And this was everything that I wanted to show you with the Hill Cipher. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If yes, please give a thumbs up. If no, give a thumbs down. And if you did not yet subscribe to our channel, I would be really happy if you subscribe. And yeah, see you in the next video.